Praise the Lord, we don't own the rights to this music. presence of the Lord. Let's stand and just welcome the Lord in this place. Thank you, Jesus. How many need the Lord today? Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we praise your name today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody get a reason on your mind to give him thanks today. This is the Thanksgiving season. What a joy and a privilege to be alive today. Hallelujah. All we need, how I many know all you need is Jesus today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We ask your blessing upon this service, oh God. Lord, we thank you for another day above the clay that you've allowed us to be in the land of the living. What a joy and a privilege and what an opportunity to just come before your people and to come before your presence with singing, praise, and your word. Father, we've lost so much this last year but Lord, we know that your grace is sufficient for us. Lord, we pray, oh God, for those that are sick in their body today, that you would touch them. We pray for First Lady, that you would touch her body. Lord, we pray for those that couldn't make it, and we pray for those in the building, those that may be watching today. Father, we pray, oh God, that we would say or do or minister something that would give them encouragement and strength during this Thanksgiving season. Lord, we honor you today. We bless your name, hallelujah. And we receive this spirit of humility today, just knowing that there's so much going on across this world. But Lord, we know we have a mandate and that's to give you praise and worship. And that's to salute, amen, the cross, amen, and to remind ourselves that we are not defeated, Amen. We are more than conquerors and we are overcomers through the blood of Jesus. And that is our prayer today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You may have your seats. Amen. We thank God for, amen, this being our family and friends day. Amen. And we want to just greet you with the love of Christ, amen, and we pray, amen, that you have a wonderful, wonderful holiday of Thanksgiving, 
Amen. And we do have a gift for everybody today. Amen. But I, I believe we're going to be blessed with so much more. Amen. In Jesus' name. Um, for our praise and worship today, and he is um, such a wonderful friend, this being friends and family, uh, we do praise God for, how many know it's good to have friends, amen, that you can trust and that you can depend on, amen. Sometimes it's good to have them in your family, like a husband or a spouse or wife or children or a cousin or something, but when you have friends outside of your family that you really trust them, amen, it means a whole lot. So we thank God for our friend being here today. So we're going to turn this service over to him and let him bless us in his own way. Pastor Madison Bold, amen, in Jesus' name. Give him a hand of praise as he comes in Jesus' name. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Yes. Hallelujah. You thankful this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I got my beautiful bride by my side this morning. Yes, Lord. Hey, Amen. We're going to open up with the song that everyone should know. Then we're going to do a special Christmas song to bring in the season. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hey, Amen. Let me get my uh, technology up here. Number 13. I got a little frog in my throat, so if you could turn the music up a little bit, I don't want everybody to hit a frog. Number 13. All right. Hallelujah. The splendor of a king. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, it trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice.
God we serve. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're going to try to get into the Christmas spirit. My baby and I have been working on this for a minute. <laughs> Pray with us as we try to bring this to you. Yes, sir. Amen. Some of you may know it. Sing along. Just don't laugh after we're done. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bible said all we required to do is make a joyful Joy, noise. Joyful noise. Amen. I can do that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, touch my say touch. All right, we ready. Give me number one. Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. In my mind, I want you to be free. For all our friends, won't you listen to me? What I say, we wish you a Merry Christmas yeah. to be one of you. Silent night, yeah.
song to do. That's a hard song to do. Um, can y'all just give it up for them one more time? Wow, that was amazing. A throwback, amen, to growing up and you heard them. Your mama had or your grandmama had the radio over in the corner. It was somewhere, the stereo, and that song would come on. That's an old song. But every time you hear it, every time it's played, it's valuable because how I many know Merry Christmas is, it lets us know about Jesus. Amen. 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 And he is our Lord and our Savior. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you're not clapping in here, I'm going to call you up next so you can come do that. Because <laughs> I know that was very, very hard. Amen. To do. Amen. So I really, really thank God so much for you. Um, in the name of Jesus, amen. I want, I want to do something interactive. Um, I want you to count on your one hand. As Brother Caleb, he's going to play something softly. Amen. We don't own the rights to this music. But I want you to go in your mind and find five friends that you can trust. 
that you know if you went to jail today <laughs> for whatever reason that they would come bail you out like yesterday. Not only jail, because that's an extreme, but if you needed like $500 right now, you could go to them. And we just threw out $500. It could have been any amount. But I, need, I want us to do that. So that's, you're in trouble, you need finances. Number three, you could go to the house and get a meal any time of the day. Number four, y'all ready for number four? When you're wrong, they gonna tell you you're wrong. That's a tough one. Now you may have to go on two hands with that one, but number four, when you're wrong and you know you're wrong, but you want your friend to side with you. They'll be the ones that tell you you're wrong. And number five, number five, they respect your love. And they don't have to be saved, but they're your friend. They respect your love for Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna give you a moment, give you a couple moments. And I want you to tell nobody just, because this is our family and friends day. And how many know we need each other for support? Every time I call on the bones, amen, to come and worship with us, they are right here, amen. There are times when I don't even call. They'll beat the call and they'll come and just support. How many know good friends will support you? They will, they'll support you, amen. And good family will too. If you got good family in your, in your, that five fingers or that one hand, how many know you ought to be thankful for good family? Amen. There's some family don't even talk, don't even get along. But if you thank God for your family, your children, uh, and I'll just use this, amen, the bold's youngest, amen, I, I, I thought she was a stranger or a daughter I hadn't seen in years. But how many know our kids can grow up and they can become our friends? Amen? Amen. So we're going to pray now for our family and friends before we go to the word. Amen. Father, we thank you now for you giving us good family. For you giving us good friends. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've allowed us to stay yoked up with them. Father, that you've allowed friendships Amen. And family, not to be broken down by the onslaught of the enemy. Lord, we thank you for the connection, the glue, amen, of family and the love that binds us together. Lord, we pray that you continue to help families stay united, that they wouldn't be separated, that they would stay together, amen, in the spirit of peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, go to your Bibles with me. Amen. We definitely don't want to hold you long today. Amen. Um, I know most of you want to go see the Dallas Cowboys win. I am with you. Amen. 150%. Amen. Sister Jazz, you ain't say yes over there. You're not a Cowboy fan? Who's, what's your team? Nothing. Nothing. Amen. Well, you're, I'm going to make you a Cowboy fan <laughs> if you have a team. Who who in this side? What's your team? Somebody tell something. The Saints. The Saints. Amen. Amen. No wonder you're a member here. Amen. Deacon John. Cowboys, brother Todd. Cowboys, I got it. All right. You better speak fast. I'll speak for you. Who your team? Buccaneers. All right. All right. Anybody in this area? Cowboy fan, Caleb. Cowboys, Pastor Madison, you're gonna mess up the song and everything you've ever done if you say the wrong name. <laughs> Saints fan. Who that? Hey, and Bucks. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to say anything over here? No, no. Today I was about to put you out the house and the church. She says she's a Bucks fan. <laughs> amen, amen. How many know that? Um, anybody else want to say anything? All right. I will say I'm not as much into football as I used to be, so it really don't matter that much to me. 
you a cowboy fan. That's, we're going to keep it at that and keep it rolling. Amen. Um, I believe God wants us to be happy. Do you all agree? And I do believe that entertainment is a part of our happiness. But I believe there are limits and there are uh, places in entertainment that we can go to where God is not pleased. And so we'll touch on it today, but we want to make sure that we, we minister by our family and our friends. Uh, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. Your word is already blessed. We thank you for the songs. Amen. The melody. Amen. Even the, the time worked on the project to make it a beautiful sound for our ears. Amen. It takes work and dedication. Even preparing your word. Even preparing to come to worship because our minds have to be right. Our minds have to be geared toward hearing a word or hearing a song of praise. Lord, truly we're living in uh, dire times and we're living in times where we've never seen before. But Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you mean to us because you are everything to us. Lord, help us be more like you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, go with me in your Bibles to 1 Samuel. I want you to park there for a moment. Amen. 1 Samuel. And again, thank you to all that came today. Amen. I certainly appreciate your presence. Amen. Today, in the name of Jesus, continue to pray for the First Lady. Amen. That she'll be feeling better. She wanted to be here. She sends her love. And I believe she's watching online. Amen. So, 1 Samuel, amen, the 23rd chapter, the 6th verse. But before we minister that, I want to kind of talk about things that are going on in our world, in our world. Now, I know when it comes to Family and Friends Day, um, we might be trying to figure out what's going to happen. But how many know there's a lot of stuff happening in our world that people are dying? Who's the, who's the latest person that has died that we know in the entertainment world? A rapper. His name was, I believe it was Young Dolph. Uh, I believe he was famous for turning um, a prodigy of Memphis, if I could say it like that. Um, I wrote some things down. Um, Young Dolph, he was a rapper from Memphis. He went back to his home town to give out turkeys. This is the Thanksgiving season to give out turkeys. And how many know that's a wonderful, wonderful gesture? Amen. Our job, the Boys and Girls Club, are giving out turkeys. I'm sure ministries are giving out what they can to bless other people. Amen. And how many know it's a blessing to give? Amen. Your Bible says it's what? More of a blessing to give than to receive. So in doing this, amen, in his hometown, Memphis, he went to one of his favorite stores to get some cookies he used to buy. And someone found out he was in the neighborhood, in the area, and they shot him dead. How many know that people that say they love you, everybody not your friend? Amen. There are so many people that want your success. They want to be in your shoes. And I'll go here. They want the parents you got. I just caught that out. They want the life that you have. They can look from outside of their house, look over at your house, and see you coming and going, say, man, I wish I was like them. Because when they turn around and all they see in their house is chaos. Anybody can feel what I'm talking about today? And uh, I don't know about y'all, but I've been on one side of the house looking at someone else's, say, man, I want to be like them too. If they're prosperous or if they're doing what's right. But it, it's a challenge when they're doing the wrong thing. And you want to be like them when they're doing the wrong thing. So here is the complexity of this sermon before we go to our text. Friends are far and few between to find. How many know that? Amen. There are, if you're writing down, amen, there are five bullets that I wanted to share today. Friends can increase your sense of belonging and purpose. 
They can incre increase your sense of belonging and purpose. Amen. Pastor Mould, good friend of mine, he took me out to the gun range to, to, to kind of teach me and show me and kind of motivate me to being more of a man that I was. <laughs> Amen. I haven't been back since with him. Not that uh, he didn't teach the right way, but I just have a phobia of the weapon. And how many know that if somebody come in your house, you, you need to learn how to defend yourself. Amen. Amen. So we know that things, when it's in its proper place, can be a good usage. Amen. Meanwhile, the country is in an uproar of a verdict that came out this week. And I'm sure many of you know, we're not going to talk about the politics of it. But how many know when things don't go right, family or friends or whatever, people will turn to their feeling. Mm -hmm. And depending on how you feel, you're going to respond. Amen. So I just want our world and our nation and Christendom and our church and our friends to realize that you can't go based on our feeling because this is not our home. Amen. And I know it, it's, it, is, it is strange to say, well, that shouldn't have happened. That's not right. It's not fair. Look throughout the long history of, of, of things that have, have been done wrong. But how many know this is still not our home? And, and we deal with, with the God that if God is God and he exists, why does he allow evil to exist? And if God is a God and God is God, why does he allow evil or can he not prevent evil? Or did he, you know, create evil? We have all those things because how many know we live in a world where evil exists? And so on Friends and Family Day, we got to figure out, God, who is on my side? Who is on my team? Because how many of folk will leave you in a minute? Amen. Oh, and that's a hurtful feeling for folks to leave you. Y'all going to help me today? Amen. Amen. It's not a good feeling when people leave you when they have said, I'm with you to the end. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll go with you in the rain and the storm. Well, you let the rain start raining. Folk will walk out on you like yesterday. Give them a reason for something not to go right. Y'all remember they praised Jesus. I'm moving, I'm moving. But y'all remember they praised Jesus one week. And then the verbiage last week I checked was crucified. So the second bullet is friends can improve your self-confidence and your self-worth. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor and say, can I trust you? <laughs> can I trust you? The third one is, friends can boost your happiness and reduce your stress. That's a good one right there. I'm going to keep moving. Four, friends can help you cope with traumas such as divorce, serious illnesses, job loss, or the death of a loved one. How many know that's when you really need friends? You really need good family and friends to help buffet the pain. Amen. amen. Come here, tournament. Amen. The, the football tournament we're having on December 4th. Amen. Um, it is our he healing festival, what we're calling it. Healing festival. Normally, it's about 10 football games. But this year, we're going to have people come out and talk about their loved ones that have passed. We're going to have a bunch of booths and vendors, but it's a healing f festival. How many know we all need to be healed? Amen. And sometimes family and friends can help us. Amen. The, the, the fourth or the fifth bullet is encourage you, friends can encourage you to change or avoid unhealthy lifestyle habits such as excessive drinking or lack of exercise. How many know friends can help us? All right, so here now, you did an exercise earlier. Here's the next exercise. Can you name a friend that you had for a long time, something happened, and y'all not friends anymore? I want you to pray for that friend right now. I want you to pray for that friend right now. Because how many know the enemy comes to us? Steal. 
kill and destroy not only your joy, but guess what? Your friendships, Amen. your families. And, and I may not hoop or holler today, but how I many know sometimes things, there are two things. Sometimes we, we, we hold on to stuff that we should cut off. Somebody say hallelujah. And then we hold on to stuff, amen, that if you don't cut it off, it's going to destroy you. And so sometimes God will allow things to happen for separation. Amen. If you're writing down in your, your paper or your program, amen. Proverbs 28, 23 says, he who rebukes a man will in the end gain more favor than he who has a flattering tongue. Watch out for your friends that you know don't support you. Mm. Stay away from a foolish man, Proverbs 14 and 7. Stay away from a foolish man, for you will not find knowledge on his lips. Proverbs 22 and 24. Proverbs 27 20 and 6 says, The kisses of an enemy may be profuse, profuse, but faithful are the wounds of a friend. Wow. Proverbs 27 and 9 says, Perfume and incense bring joy to the heart, and the pleasantness of one's friend springs from his earnest counsel. Proverbs 27 17. I know I'm giving you a bunch of scriptures today, but I'm just talking about friends. Somebody say, He's just talking about friends. As iron sharpens iron, you know it, so one man sharpens another. So here now, let's go to our text. Amen. First Samuel. Amen. The 23rd verse. 23rd chapter starting at the 6th verse. When you there, say amen. amen. Look to your neighbor one more time. Say, can I trust you? And it came to pass when Abathar, the son of Ambalek, fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with the ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah, and Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that have gates and bars. Mm. And Saul called all the people together to war, to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And many of you know that King Saul had David to sing for him mm -hmm. and to play melody for him. Mm -hmm. But when things don't go right or when jealousy enters the picture, mm -hmm. how many know it's easy to turn on the one closest to you yeah. than to turn on somebody you don't even know? Mm -hmm. mm. And that's where the strategic... <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Watch this. The, the, the devil is an ancient demon. But he doesn't look old. Let that marinate. Somebody just stir that around. Ancient means been around a long time. But his face is fresh. He disguises his tactics with just another situa situation or scenario. Here now, amen, King Saul, amen, loved to hear David's harp. But when things don't go right or when jealousy enters a picture, things change. What verse did? Eight. And Saul called all the people together to war and to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him. Wow. And he said to Abathar, the priest, bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. You got to be careful when people plot against you. Many times you don't even know that they're plotting. Yeah, be careful when your friends always say yeah, yeah, yeah to you and that you ain't never wrong. You can't be in the, the every room you go to and you got the right answers. Every room. 
<laughs> there are different rooms. And how many know sometimes some rooms you go into, you just listen and observe. Y'all know what rooms I'm talking about? Churches or lawyer offices or different houses. <laughs> you know, different atmospheres. You go into different settings. You can't be the smartest in the room. That's how you learn. That's how you grow by allowing other people to pour into you. Here it is, amen. Um, thank you, sir. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant have heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Then said David, will the men of Keilah deliver me and thy men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, they will deliver thee up. Somebody say there's a plan going on. 13, let me park here and uh, give me about five minutes. We're going to close. Amen. We'll have worship. A lot of times we miss the strategic plan of the setup. There's always things in motion when the enemy is trying to break up family and friends. But we don't see it because we're not supernatural. We're only spiritual. Now, y'all help me. Y'all pray for me in this moment. <laughs> How many know we're all spiritual? Amen. But you can't see in the supernatural unless you God gave you that gift. Amen. So we walk around blind sometimes, saved but blind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thinking that, oh, I can figure this out. But there is a supernatural Entity that's an ancient demon pulling strings through your emotions. Here we see the plan strategically unfolding that there is a setup to kill David. Now we know David is God's anointed and Saul is jealous of David's anointing. What verse? Then David and his men, which were about 600, arose and departed out of Keilah. And went whithersoever they could. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah. And he forbear to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds. And remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day. But God delivered him not unto his hand. What we're reading is that the devil, the devil will continue to try to pull you down every day. Every day, strategically, the devil wants your demise. He wants to destroy you. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. But how many know we can't see it? We can't see it. We see arguments happening. Guess what? The devil wants to destroy your relationship. You see, bad things going, the devil want to destroy your relationship. And sometimes our personality, amen, makes us feel like um, I'm the strongest one in the room when really you're just a spiritual being, amen, prone to, amen, supernatural, what's the word? You can be deceived. Deception, how I many know we can be deceived? Do you think, and I don't condone his lyrics, but do you think that when young Dolph went into the store to get cookies, that he knew the next moment he would get shot? If he did, guess what? He wouldn't have got cookies that day. Amen. Wonderful gesture with the turkeys to bless people. But how many know no matter who you are, the devil's job is to destroy you? Mm -hmm. And we got to figure out a way to get from under the radar of the enemy to get on the right level with God so he can keep you safe under the shadow of his wings. What verse? We're almost at worship. 15 says, and David saw, somebody say discernment. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. Jonathan, Saul's, and Jonathan Saul's son arose and went to David unto the wood and strengthen his hand in God. Now, who was Jonathan? We already know it, some of us. Mm -hmm. 
David's what? Friend. But who also was Saul? King Saul's what? Son. So sometimes the enemy think he's won, but how many know God will give you favor even with the king? Because God will give you favor with good friends. And this is, we're ready for worship. And, and this is what I, I, you know, I chose this text and this word just to get to this part and, and other scriptures that talks about, you know, Jonathan was good for him at this level and area. But this is what I wanted to bring out. And he said unto him, fear not for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee. Mm. So that means whatever I got to do to keep you safe, I'm willing to disobey my dad. Yes. The king. Somebody, the king. Amen. Not just my, thank you, sir. Not just my father, but royalty and leadership and king. Because really the king could kill me because I'm still under his authority. Amen. Amen. But when you get some friends, man. Friends ain't going to break up with no silly argument. Y'all hear me? I'm talking about good friends. Friends know how to move on from foolishness. I'm trying not to go here, but, you know, in ministry, you know, I've, I've been pastor 16 years. And, and y'all can see that the church ain't packed out. I've had some people to leave for some let somebody else say it. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> somebody else say it. <laughs> but foolishness. If you in it, you in it to win it. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you go on and, and the Lord bless you to start other ministries, that's different when you leave the right way. And the Lord, he, he opens up doors and you go on in ministry. But you leave because you just fell out. Over foolishness. I'm talking about good friends and good family. Good family will cook a meal for you. Just because you're good to them. Not because you're hungry. But you've been good to them. Anybody you know you've been good to? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, I feel the spirit now. Hallelujah. Somebody you know you done did all you can for them. But how many know that there's a limit? Yeah. Hello. There's a limit to where, and I'm fast forwarding the text almost to the end, where I'm not going to let you bring me down. Amen. Am I talking to anybody in the house? Amen. If you want to fall out with me, fall out. Yeah. But I'm not going to let you bring, you've been doing it too long anyway. I refuse, my father used to say, to live beneath my privilege. Hallelujah. Amen. Any kingdom kids in the house, hallelujah, amen. that's still working on a kingdom agenda, agenda, know that, amen, if God be for you, who can be against you? Yeah. King, King Saul didn't even know that his son was against him. Hallelujah. Fighting and keeping David safe. Hallelujah. It goes on and I'm almost done. It says, he said unto him, fear not for the hand of Saul, my father, he shall not find thee. And shalt thou be king over Israel. And I shall be next unto thee. And that also my Saul, my father, knoweth it. I'm done. Let's all stand. Watch this. Is something I didn't see, but I see it now. Saul, amen, didn't even realize that Jonathan Amen. Had promoted his friend over his king. Yeah. Lord, have when you get God's favor, how many know that it don't matter your authority? Amen. When God's authority rules and reigns over everything. Amen. Father, today we denounce every bad thing, every bad friendship. Amen. That's still trying to linger and hold on and to get us to turn around. Amen. And go back. Father, as we are, amen, been hidden by you in the mountain, amen, holding on to that strength, the wood, 
Father, we ask, oh God, that you would give us good friends. Give us good family. Give us people that would be in our, our corner and our circle. Amen. And don't let us fail and don't let us fall. Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen marriages. Strengthen single relationships. Strengthen our children's relationship with their parents and with their siblings today. Father, strengthen this ministry and the ministries that are here represented. Father, we thank you and we love you, O oh God. We know that, amen, if, if you be for us, who can be against us? Lord, we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus. We denounce his devices to come and sabotage and to put landmines against friendships and families today. Devil, you don't have the victory and we see you. We're stepping over, amen, your traps. Hallelujah. We're removing, oh God, the devices, amen, that you've tried to conjure up and to confuse us and to make us think that we are not loved or we are not appreciated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear that in the spirit. Somebody say, you, I am loved and I am appreciated. Hallelujah. Somebody need to know that you are appreciated. Even though they didn't appreciate, I appreciate you in the name of Jesus. They didn't know what they had, but I appreciate you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Went to an old job on yesterday. Let me give this testimony. Hallelujah. I'm working in a new job now. Different ones said hello and good to see you. Hallelujah. The place looked so boring. Hallelujah. No noise or nothing in the atmosphere. How we miss you. But how many know when the Lord elevates you? Ain't no turning around and going back. How many know some of y'all don't you turn around and don't you go back? Somebody give the Lord a praise for that. Don't you turn around and don't you go back. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we end this, amen, delivery of your word, we pray, oh God, that you would bless us, bless our friends and our family. Lord, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise.